nonlinear geometry. Okay, we have actually touched on this nonlinear geometry. We have actually used it a few times as well. So basically, how do you activate nonlinear geometry? Is basically with this large displacement, right? So you just need to turn on the param either from the param or you set it in the NL palm large displacement, right? Yeah, so large displacement is basically to capture those large deformation, large rotation. If you're doing buckling, definitely to turn on. And also following uh, the follower loads. So we will see this in chapter four later on. The next chapter, how do we uh, apply followers? For what what are follower loads and then how do we activate them? Okay. So geometry nonlinear is basically a change in, in structural stiffness due to the large deformation that's happening. Right, so we need to turn on large displacement here. So this is how you turn it on, either from the param or from the um, NL palm defined in the subcase. Right? Yeah. So it's this example of a large displacement as well. When there's a snap through, right? There's a very huge uh, structural change here because here is is probably stiff. Okay. Then it's uh, suddenly there's a snap, and then there's suddenly loss of stiffness. And then there is a uh, stiffness in the reverse direction. So, yep. So this is definitely you will require large displacement. If you were to use this, just the small displacement formulation, then you probably get a linear curve like this. So it's definitely wrong. Okay. Uh, these are the elements that are supporting the large displacement large displacement formulation. Okay. Uh, yeah, so your shell solids are all supported. Uh, special elements like bushing all these are not supported. Uh, meaning that you can still run if you turn on large displacement, it will still complete without error, but then it's actually using the small strain formulation to calculate. Okay. But if you have these elements RBE1, which is really seldom used, and con M, which is also seldom used. Uh, then this will not support large displacement. Okay, currently not supported. So don't have to worry about this. Actually, we seldom use this anyway. Okay, we normally what do we use more? It's uh, what do we use more? Is this RB two here, which is already supported? RB three is also supported already. Uh, con M is normally not supported. Uh, seldom. Uh, we use con M two. Okay, so yeah, so these are just mass elements, so you don't really need a uh, large displacement for mass elements. Okay, so it's the mass is considered there, so we don't really need to uh, have any large displacement for the for the uh, concentrated mass or the lump mass, right? Uh, yeah, membranes are supported, so. Um, there are certain shell elements uh, that we, if you we model them as membranes, membranes are just skins. Uh, you only define in the material, um, the material in the mat at mat one. Okay, you only define MID one. So if you remember for, um, let me go back to Iberworks. If you define a material for shell elements okay or let me, put, let me rephrase that if you have a shell if you have a shell element that you want to model it has just skin right skin means that it's just have uh, it just have the uh, stiffness in in the bending you just have bending stiffness but it doesn't have any stiffness elsewhere then you probably need to turn on uh, in the material here sorry not in the material the property here, you need to turn on uh, MID one. Okay, so for MID two and MID three, you need to check this and then say blank. If you want to model it has skin. Okay, if you want to model any shell elements has skin, it it cannot have any any stiffness in uh, this sorry in this bending direction and cannot have any stiffness in the transverse direction. Only in the axle. Or in in plane direction, so MID one will cover that. Uh, that's why you need to put MID two, MID three to be blank. If you were to model a, a skin, okay. But if not, if you just a, if it's just a normal tin plate, then you can you need to turn this two off, okay. So 
to put it clearer, let me show you in the MID in MAT1 here. Okay. So you see here, um, sorry, not MAT, uh, P shell. P shell, P shell. So if you want to model a shell element has a skin, you just need to define MID1, MID2, MID3 will be blank. Normal, in normal case, for normal team plates, MID1 equals to MID2 equals to MID3. Okay. Like for example, in the bottom here, you see uh, now here is actually three different materials, but in normal case, the team plates will have all the same material. Okay. So even though just model for skin, that's why MID1 needs to be activated, MID2 and MID3 will be blank. All right, so uh, yeah, so let's go back. Membranes are also supported for large displacements. So if you have membranes in your model, then don't worry, uh, it's still supported for large displacement. All right. And this is a P bush or general spring. We normally don't use this anymore. So we normally have a P bush um that is the normal p bush p bush 3d okay so that p bush uh you can run without error but it's not using the the lush displacement okay so material support all these materials are supported for large displacement so don't worry your mat h is supported mat s1 is supported okay mat one is supported right and uh <laughs> If you use a large distribution has a preload, so remember earlier we, we talked about preloaded model analysis. So if like if you want to consider in the first step to have a large displacement, you can do that, and then use that large displacement result has a preloaded uh, result or preloaded model for the model analysis. So you need to define the step sub preload here to refer to the first step, which is the large displacement. Okay, so meaning to say you can have something like this. Uh, step one, okay, you run with step one, you run with a uh, large displacement, large displacement, and uh, it's going to be non-linear, okay. Then second step, you run the model analysis, which will actually use the preloaded results of step one here, okay. So it's going to take this model and run it, run model analysis, okay. The result of this model run model analysis, but uh, take note that it will only consider the stiffness change. It doesn't really take the end result of this. So meaning that if let's say you have some stresses here, it doesn't really take the stress and then continue to perform a model analysis. You will just update the stiffness uh, that's happening to the model and run in the model analysis, right? So it's just a stiffness update uh, rather than a the exactly model update. Okay, it's just the stiffness matrix that's going to be updated. Yep, so you can see something like this. Uh, yeah. So this is the uh, first we run large displacement here. Okay, so there's large displacement in the first step and refer using this preload here. Okay, so this refers to the first subcase. All right. Same thing here as well. We also have this preload. But this is a model frequency response referring to a NL step. Okay, here is a linear static analysis referred to an NL step. So it's also possible. And here we have a buckling that refers to large displacement. So, so buckling, if you remember, we need to refer it to, um, buckling will need to refer to a static subcase. Okay, because it's, remember your, your factor that you calculate, the critical load, critical load, okay. Uh, is actually the factor, right? Factor times the uh, reference load. Okay, so the reference load comes from the static here. Critical load is is what we will calculate here, right? So always need to refer to reference load. This subcase five here is a reference load. Okay. 
but this reference load is, is also preloaded. So you see this reference load is preloaded. This here is calculated from the first subcase. Okay. So this is how it's, it's connected. All right. Okay. And initial relief is also supported for large displacement. All right. So even to use uh, large displacement with uh, initial relief, we can also do that. Right, just uh, just some um some notes for you guys. Okay, so now we can try to set up. Actually, we already done large distance already. Basically, it's very easy to turn on. Just either turn on from the param or you turn on from from uh, the NL pump. Okay, so there's nothing much to it. But you see difference whether you turn it on and off. Uh, turn it on, on or off. So if you if you perform this exercise three uh, A, you can actually check the uh, check the results. There's another exercise here. Um, you can also try this. Basically, the models already set up. Context all set up because we haven't touched on contact yet. But here the models all set up. All you need to do to to set between the two models here, one you run with a uh, small displacement, the other one you turn on large displacement. So you get to see results like this. Um, small displacement is going to be pretty weird, right? Uh, deformation is large and, and so on. But if you turn on large displacement, we actually uh, get better capture of the behavior, right? Of this of the local strain especially. Right? So you can try this. Um, try to set this up as well. Right. So I won't go too detail because basically it's pretty easy setup for large displacement. Nothing much there, All right? So let's go on the Q and A. Um, which statements are true again? So let's go one by one. Param large displacement activates large displacement for all subcases. Okay. So here is talking about if let's say you have three subcases, right? Subcase one, subcase two, subcase three. All of them are, imagine all of them are non-linear static runs, NL stat runs, okay? Of course, you know under NL stat, in the subcase, uh, you need to define the NL palm, right? You, so there are two ways to activate large displacement, either through NL palm, where you turn on large displacement here, Okay. Or you use a param card to define the large displacement. Right? So you can use either one to turn on large displacement. The difference is if you turn on through the subcase, so this will actually just turn on the large displacement for subcase one. For subcase two, you need to turn on again the NL palm there if you want to use large displacement for subcase two. Okay, and so on for subcase three. But if you define it using the NL and if you define it using the param card here, param large displacement one, this is going to turn on for all of them. Okay, so yes, uh, it will turn on large displacement for all subcases, only if they are caveat here, only if they are NL stat subcases. Okay, of course, if they're not NL stat, then nothing is going to be done. Okay, if this is if, if, if if it's just a linear static, then probably and param here won't do anything. Okay. Um, number two, initial relief is useful if unbalanced force exists. So this is a recap of uh, what we have learned uh, in the last training. What's initial relief for? Initial relief is applied where we apply a um, we apply a imaginary force to balance out the force that's being applied to the model, especially when the model doesn't have any constraint to it. Okay, so yes, this is true. Okay. Um, statement three: a change in structural stiffness is geometric nonlinear. Okay, so. Uh, yeah, we learned this in, in the beginning. Nonlinear geometry is actually change in structural stiffness, right? So remember what we have with the what we had earlier with this one, the snap through here. 
Okay. So here is actually a change in, in stiffness. So annual non-linear geometric is actually just change in the stiffness here. First, probably is stiff, then when you experience that step through, then you suddenly there's a drop in stiffness, right? There's a drop in stiffness here. So no force is required. So there's a drop in stiffness and then there's and then there's a um, stiffness change where there's stiffness in the opposite direction. Okay. So this is uh, yep. So geometric non-linear deals with stiffness change. Okay, so the statement just now was true as well. So all the statements are true for the question for this uh, for this question here. Okay, so all the statements here are true. All right. Next chapter is um, non-linear loads. Okay, and basically we're going to talk how do we actually how do we use this for lower loads. So we have we have uh, I've mentioned this earlier in the previous chapter of nonlinear geometry. Nonlinear geometry is actually used to define follower loads. So we see what's follower load, right? So follower load is a loading that would change. Um, sorry, let me just double check the recording first. Okay. So follower is, is a load that would change with respect to the change in geometry. Okay. So if you define your load, <coughs> At the beginning, that is in um, this Z direction. And if there's no follower load present, even though now the the beam has already bent by a lot, there's a really large displacement already, and it's actually caused a change in the original geometry, right? If your fall if your load doesn't follow the change of the geometry, that's why it's without follower, it doesn't follow the change then your force will always be just in the Z direction, which is downwards, right? But if your force has follower load enabled, as the geometry is bending, you will see that your force will then follow that geometry change. Okay, so that's the purpose of turning on that follower load. Okay. <clears throat> So you have to turn that on. You can just use the param there. And then this will enable that follower load. OK. <coughs> and of course, this has to be used together with large displacement. Now. So having this, this turn on, but you don't have large displacement doesn't make sense. So you need to turn on the param large displacement also. All right. Um, all right. So it's an example where this is my loading. OK, so if I don't turn on the follower load is just going to just drag this beam all the way uh, following this direction here okay but you have the follower load on because has this changes uh, as i define my force to be always normal to this uh, initial phase has now the, the the phase has now this beam has been bent uh, my force will still keep uh, to be normal to this uh, to this phase here, right? So that's where follower load will have effect. Okay. Imagine this is another example. Imagine your if let's say pressure, pressure can also be follower follower on or off, right? As you know, pressure. Let's say if this is a if this is a rubber, right? And pressure is always directed um, normal to the to the to the face. If the follower load is not turned on your direction cannot change right so it's it's always normal to the initial phase initial phase is flat so it's always normal that's why it pushes this up the pressure but if it's if this is a rubber of course when it expands you become a balloon for example you will see that um, the direction of the pressure is always normal to the element so if the element is suddenly now changes direction is no longer flat then the pressure will also follow that Okay, so that's an example of uh, follower pressure. Okay. Uh, uh, something to note, only those elements supported for large displacements are supported for follower load, of course. We need large displacement, right? So if large displacement doesn't happen, then follower load would happen. Okay. Uh, limitation here, we have... Uh, all these forces here can be used for follower load, so we need to um, define all this. We actually will, in our exercise later, we actually use force one. And 
and we have to follow a lot in enforcement here. OK. Uh, if you're using continue non linear sub, right? Continue non linear sub, then uh, the follower load option must be the same. Means if you turn on in the first sub case, there is a follower load. Second sub case, you need to turn on as well. Okay. All right. Hope you guys can still hear me. It's raining pretty heavily here. Um. Right, so this is a uh, if you're you if you're defining follower load with force, then you need to turn on this follower load here. Okay, so there's one follower option that can be turned on when you're using the force uh, card, and also moment card as well. There'll be a follower here, so you need to turn that on also. Okay, basically just turn it on, on or on or off. It's as simple as that. All right. Uh, payload two. If you're using payload two, then you need to turn on from the param. So if the, remember, there are two ways to turn on. One is from the param. So if you're using payload, the way to turn it on is by using this param card here. Okay. So this will activate the the pressure, and the pressure change will change according to the surface. Okay. So normally we use uh, follower load, follower pressure here one. So this will actually update. All right. So if you're using payload. Uh, doesn't matter payload two or payload four. You need to turn on the param follower if you don't use the follower load for pressure. Okay. All right. So I will demonstrate this exercise now on how to set up. Uh, here we're going to use force one. So there will be two models uh, here. There will be two models. One is first we run without follower load, and the other one with with follower load. Okay. Uh, yep, so let's do that. If you let's just look at the exercise first. If you look at the manual. Okay, so we are going to use uh, this as the standard. Then we will define with force one here. Okay, so when you define force one, and then we also set the uh, param in the follower load to one as well to to turn that on. So we need to set both of them on. Okay, so that's just a reminder. Let me go straight to the model. Uh, let me just check if it's. Okay, FVM. So import the FVM file. Okay. Right. So it's just a curved beam. There's a RBA at both ends. One will be the support, the other will be here, uh, where we apply the loads. Okay. So let me just check on the ID first. This is eighty five, eighty six. Okay. So I'll just follow the convention here. Oh, it's, the numbering is different already. Anyway, I will define eighty five at the bottom to be the to be the SPC, right? Eighty five at the bottom to be SPC, and then the other side eighty six to be the load application. Okay, so the model doesn't have anything; doesn't have even have a property and material yet. All right. So first step, let's define the material first. I'm just going to use steel, right? So I'm going to create, oops, create material first. Use a steel material, just put in the standard. Uh, at this one, for this one, I'm just going to use the linear material. And then I'll create another property for that beam here. Okay, so it's going to be a P solid. 
and I'll put in my material here. Okay, so property and then define it to the component. Pin property, yep. And I need another load collector for the SPC. Since no as no load collector is created yet, I can just straight away come to here. It will auto create itself. So I'll create a constraint. Uh, for this point here. Oops. No, it's right. So I'm gonna create a constraint for this point to lock all six. SPC created at here for all six degree of freedom. Create, all right, one to six. And double check on that. Uh, here, look collector, we have this, just rename this to SPC, all right? And then I have the other side, the force. Uh, there's something special about the force here. Let me just, it's gonna be magnitude of 100 in in this direction okay so i do not want the force to be grouped together with this spc here so i will need to create another one i can just duplicate this okay uh then i call this force okay but cut image for force spc is always none okay there's no cut image for that so it's okay and now i will create that force under here, click on this icon. All right. And here I'm going to use force one because force one allows me to define the direction. Okay. So force one, uh, the direction of the force one will always change because we need to define the direction. Okay. So here, um, it's going to be applied on this node. Magnitude is 100. Okay. The direction is following this one here. So I'm just going to take this one and this one. Okay, so, oops, sorry. This is the force, this is the direction. Okay. Right, and create. Right, so this force here is always going to be based on the coordinates of these two. Of these two. So as these two experience large displacement, the force is going to, con is going to follow the, the coordinates here, okay. So that's uh, force defined, force one. Of course, you need to turn on the two params, right? One is the large displacement. Let's turn that on first. Large displacement on and follower load on. Okay. So that's all you need to do to have follower load on. All right. Let's just change the color so that we can differentiate. And then, of course, you need your cards for the NL pump. So, all your nonlinear cards need to be created as well. NL pump, um, let's just do 0 0.1. Then uh, we do a NL out as well. Oops. NL out. Rename this to NL pump. So and now out uh I'll just simply do a ten step here. Okay. All right, so let's create the load step now. So we call this loading step. It will be and now stat SPC is my SPC there, loading will be my force one, which is here. And now pump, I don't need to use the large distribution, right? Because I return on the param, so I can just use it here. And then the end out. Okay, so you can try this one. Okay, that's good enough. We can run this. I'll save as 
This is with uh, large displacement. Oh, let me just put four lower. Okay, this is with four lower load. So run this. Okay. So for comparison, I will run another one. Another one without follow load. Okay, I'll just copy and paste. Um, let me just turn this off. Let's see if this will happen. Okay, so I just turn off the follower load parameter. And we'll run that. So this is no follower. Right, so I'll open Compute Console again to run that file. No follower. Okay, so let's open the file first with the follower load. Okay, so you see this is the result. Okay. Displacement. And let's open another window where we run. Should be done by now. Okay. Mm. Oops. So open no follower. Okay. So with and without follower load, see this is the final result. You already see it already. So let me turn on this placement and synchronize them. Okay. So you can see the difference between with and without follower load, right? So one is always gonna be normal or perpendicular to the to the surface there. The other one, the direction the direction is always fixed, so you tend to pull it after it has uh, surpassed a certain uh, displacement. You will actually drag the the entire or pull the entire beam in that direction. Okay. Okay, so you can see the difference there. Okay, so with and without follower load. So remember to turn that on if you really need it, especially if you are dealing with large displacement. Okay, any questions? Pretty easy to set up. Um, yeah. Right, so uh, next topic is uh, multi loads where you have a uh, so far we have done, we only deal with a uh, single step load. But if you have double step, like what we uh, did earlier with the rubber, where there are two steps, right? One is loading, the other unloading. So if you want to do a continuation, you need to turn on this continue nonlinear sub here, okay? 
But the other ways, uh, you can use pre-tensioning, pre-loading, as well as time-dependent loading. So there are a few ways to create multi-step. Here is uh, a summary of what is going to happen uh, if you use different steps or different methods to to simulate your multi-step, right? Uh, if you use a continuous non-near sub, that's why I like this the most, you will actually carry over all the stress, strain, and displacement. So step one, the end result of step one is going to be carried over to the uh, initial step or step two. Okay, so this is good, right? If you do a time-dependent loading, it's also going to carry over. Okay, so time-dependent loading is like in, in one step, you define from time zero to 0 0.5, you have a loading, 0 0.5 to 1, you have unloading. Okay, so of course that will carry over those uh, stress, strain, and displacement as well. Okay, if you're doing pre-tension, it will carry over as well, but if you're doing preload, so the stats up preload that I mentioned earlier, the preloaded model analysis, for example, it doesn't carry over the stress, strain, and displacement. It just carry over the stiffness. Okay, so stiffness matrix is going to be updated if you're using a, a preload. But if you're doing pretension, then yes, uh, the stress stream also will carry over. Okay. Uh, yep. So if this also depends, you can use continue nonlinear sub if both your sub cases are nonlinear. So step one is nonlinear, step two has to be nonlinear also. Okay. Uh, yep. If you're doing time dependent loading, you can do all in just a single step. You don't need a second step. So that's the difference here, right? It can be linear here, it can be non-linear here as well. Pre-tension as well, it can be linear, it can be non-linear, preloading as well. Okay. So you can see different use cases where you want to use it. Okay, right. Um, right. Here's just an example. Uh, first step we have the force pushing down, and then the second step we have a force that is in the uh in the lateral direction. Okay, so if you want to do this, uh, you need to use, if they are non-linear, you can use continue non-linear sub. Okay, so you can use continue non-linear sub. And when you define that, you can define it a few ways, especially if you are, um, if you are editing the uh, text file or editing the input deck, right? But if not, then you just set it up in, in Hyperworks here. All you need to do to, Oops, let me see where's my hyperworks. Okay, to set up hype in hyperworks, all you need to do is define it here. Continue non-linear sub. Yep. To activate that, just continue non-linear sub and then choose uh, you can choose yes. Yes means that you will continue from the previous step. Or you can also refer it to a particular step. So let's say step three will refer to step one. You can set here subcase ID to be the this the particular step. Okay. So you can do that also. Either you use yes or point it directly to a subcase ID. Right. So yeah, so here's an example where it referred directly to a subcase ID. Here you just have the yes that is gonna actually refer back to the preceding or the previous subcase. Right. Uh you, if you do not use continue non near sub. Uh, SPC has the option to have this fixed as well. So, in a way, if you're using continuous nonlinear sub, then you don't need to use F already, right? So F is gonna um, fix option is similar to saying maintaining the condition after you have um, compressed it and then use it for the second step. Okay, but now because we have continuous nonlinear sub, so you don't really need to define the fix. Uh, the fixed flag here in this SPC card. Previously, we need to define that. Okay. So now you don't actually need to do this. Um, if you're using multiple step defined in the, in a loading history in a curve here, you can define this way. So this loading and then there's unloading. Okay. So define all the the, the steps inside um inside a curve. Okay. So remember. Um, the automatic time increment. So we always run step. Each step is going to be from zero to one. Okay. So you need to readjust your your or scale up your time here, so that your load will be at zero point five is fifty percent loading, and then zero point five after that is uh, the the second fifty percent. Okay. So you need to consider this lah. 
Okay, so basically, uh, very easy, just use this uh, T load one to define it, right? Basically, you just define your, uh, you just need to define your time here or load increment. For example, here zero, where is the loading? 0 0.5, where is the percentage of load? And then one is where is the loading? So define it uh, and then put it under here, okay? TID here. Uh, yep, for, for, so for T lot one, um, we will, we will learn this, we will use this a lot in, in our linear dynamics topic later on, T lot one. So you can see here, we actually need to define the type of, the type of loading. So whether you are loading a load or you're loading displacement, you need to define it here, what's the type, okay? Yeah, basically this is modern, right? And then the another adapt card we have touched this earlier, where we actually introduced the stabilize. So there are some other things that you can also uh, implement to control your run. For example, we touch a bit the number of cutbacks, the maximum time increment allowed, or minimum time increment allowed. Okay, so if you do, if you set a minimum time increment allowed, means that you cannot go lower than that. So let me show you from one of the runs here. So you can see this is the current time increment. It's really pretty easy. La. So it's only all fixed already 0 0.1. But if it has some issues with convergence, which I can show you from one of the examples that we ran earlier. Especially this one where we have convergence issue. Or oh, let's just open the monitor file. Okay, so you can see this is the current time step increment. You can see it's pretty small, all the way down down to one e minus seven, one to uh, all the way down to e minus seven, right? So it's a very very small time step. If let's say if you did set um your DT mean here, let's say to be one E minus four, then it won't go down to that stage. Once you have touch reach that one E minus four, if we cannot converge, remember if we cannot converge, we need to reduce it 25% of the current loading. So if, if if you cannot converge at one E minus four, it actually needs to go down to quarter of that. Okay, so it's gonna go to uh point two uh 0.25 e minus 4 or 2.5 e minus 5. Okay, so you need to go down lower, but because of the minimum time increment that we have set, it doesn't allow that. So it will actually fail and it will complain that uh, minimum time increment has been reached. Okay, so this is useful to set so that you don't have to wait until the run to be very small and actually the, it won't converge. Maybe uh, it continues to run at the pace of e minus 7, e minus 8 and takes forever to, to complete, right? So you might not want to wait until so long to to find out that, okay, there's actually some some uh, uh, modeling mistake. There might be some contact error in my model before you go and fix it and then run again. Okay, so you probably want to set it, let's say one E minus four. Uh, once you reach to that, if you cannot converge, then it says, I know there's something wrong in my model already. Okay, so for example, in, in this case here, which I ran earlier, it went down all the way to 1 e minus 7, and it stays that way for 1 e minus 6, e minus 6, e minus 6, e minus 7, right? So instead of waiting here, I can say this is already 1 e minus 4, right? If I put in my dt min to be 1 e minus 4, once it has reached this, it still cannot converge, it try to go down lower, then it will tell me you fail already. So I know there's something wrong in my model. At very early stage. I don't need to wait until so long. I need to know that at the 40, 43rd uh, increment, then you know there's something wrong with my model. Okay, so this will be good for you to uh, help uh, help you to save some time instead of waiting for so long, and then in the end find out your model cannot converge. Something wrong with the model. Uh, you can take early. You can take the uh, countermeasure steps early on. Okay, to fix the model. All right. So that's the purpose of DT mean. DT max is also the same, but it's made to control the maximum time increment. 
right? So you don't have uh, too, too large that because that will also affect the convergence, right? Uh, right, so the direct option here, you can see here's one direct. Uh, by default, we turn on the adaptive time increment scheme. So that's why you see that we have the cutbacks and then you reduce the time step and then try to converge, right? So by default, this is turned on. But if you do not want that, you can set to direct, means that it will just run. If we encounter some some um, some error, it won't cut back and then you will just say you fail, right? So with direct, you will just directly stop and saying that you will fail. So you will, yeah, for example, here 0 0.1 increment, it can complete. 0 0.2 try to run, then it um, encountered some error. It won't, it won't go to some cutbacks already. It definitely immediately tell you that it has failed. Okay, so um, there's, there's uh, pros and cons. Uh, pro is that you get to find out earlier on if your model is, is failing. Uh, but then sometimes allowing cutbacks can allow your model to converge also. So this is good. You can go and fix your model, but sometimes if your model is highly unstable, uh, you need to you need to de you need to allow that initial cutback and then also try to introduce some energy to it. Okay. So this one, yeah, I seldom use it because I will ref I will prefer to it to try to complete itself using the um, using that time increment, adapt, adaptive time increment scheme rather than uh, using a fixed scheme. Okay. Yeah, so it's so what it was done. When you are using a um, non converge, you actually run with a small time step and try to converge. Right. Okay, then that's that. Then um, and then out controls the output of your results, right? So either you want to output at a specific time increment or you can choose the, now we have the time and frequency here as well, right? Frequency and time here as well. So we can also turn on um, this one, save non-convergence so that we get the final step. If there's a non-convergence and the run failed due, due to that, we get the final step being output as well. So normally it's best, best to set this as a, um, save normal. By default, if you turn on NLR, it's going to set three to yes anyway. This is a new practice. Lah. Previously, it's not. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, one thing to note the NL out is when we will specify NL out. Let me go to Hyperbox here. If you turn on NL out, right? Right, if you turn on NL out and uh, let's say you, you turn on NL out, you don't specify this on, safe non convergence is going to be yes by default. Okay, but if you check this here, uh, by default, here is going to be no. Lah. So this is default in Hypermesh itself or Hypox itself. If you turn this to be no, uh, if you just turn this on, it's going to be shown no here. So you need to be careful. Uh, you need to turn this back on to yes. Okay, so that this no here is actually the default in 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 uh, Hyperworks or Hypermesh. So you need to double check that. But if you just leave it here to be blank, by default it's going to be turned on when you have the NL cut, uh, NL out cut. Okay, so either you do this, or you, if you want to really check this, make sure you turn this to yes. Right, that's the only thing that you need to be aware of. Okay. Yep, so that is all for uh, this this short topic here on um, follower load and also the non-linear loadings. Okay. So this is an example where we have the uh, the direct there, whether it's uh, auto or fix, right? So if it's, um, if you set it to fix, when you encounter some convergence issue, you just die off there. Okay. 
you just uh, end the, the simulation, cannot converge because it, you don't allow it to even cut back. So if you allow it to cut back, by default, we allow that, which is using the auto. So you will cut back and try to achieve convergence. Okay, so that's the, yeah, so that's why I prefer to leave it like that instead of uh, you choosing direct. Okay. Why people choose direct? <coughs> Previously, for NL out, okay. Previously, NL out, we cannot output according to time. So you cannot define it to output at time equals to 0 0.1, time equals to 0 0.2. So if they want our solution to output at the specific time, they'll choose direct to be on. <coughs> so when direct is on, you don't allow it to cut back. So you will need to complete at 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and then output the results. Okay. If the run cannot output that, then, then you'll fail. But now with the new NL out, uh, you can comp you can couple it together with this one here. So you can have the adaptive time time step increment, and then you can you can also output a specific time that you want. All right. So it's it's more flexible now, comparing to last time where we just <clears throat> where we don't have the option in NL out. All right. So now we have that. So uh, just I will just advise you to leave it leave the NL adapt here to be auto. The direct here to be auto okay and then uh, you request the output that you want in nl out 